If you're anything like me, you're a big fan of the old DMG Game Boy right here. Great design and it was perfect at the time. And this probably means you like all of the new retro handhelds and the vertical form factor that's out today. The question is really though, what is the best vertical handheld that we can get today? What's the best for you? What's the best on the market? We'll get into that. I'll let you know my favorite one as well. In all fairness, it's probably really difficult to decide which is the best vertical handheld you can buy at the moment because of the variation and so much out there on offer. Small, big, medium, cheap, expensive. There's a whole variety. I'm just gonna go through some of the ones that I've got to hand. So without further ado, let's head over to the table. So I'm gonna try and keep this video as brief as I possibly can. Jumping straight into the Miu Mini series of devices. You got the Miu Mini, and then you got the upgrade, which was the Miu Mini Plus. We'll start off with the Miu Mini. Fantastic device, great color options, extremely pocketable. And even the firmware that it came out with wasn't too bad. And it just blew up, especially when the onion, the onion guys, that's what I'm gonna call them, came up with their firmware, making this thing just feel smooth and seamless. The only issue is with this device is that they're extremely hard to come by, making them very expensive when you do see them. But it's, it's actually pretty great, super pocketable. I would say though, after long gameplay sessions, you're probably gonna feel a little bit cramped. You got your R triggers, you got your L triggers there as well. Another annoying thing about this device is that this back, it just came off really easily. <clears throat> and that was just something that put me off. I, I did carry it around a lot, but it just put me off after a while. But as I say, because these things were so difficult to come by, me decided to rectify that problem with the Miu Mini Plus, which again, awesome device, great variation of colors, and what you can do with it, especially with the skins. Onion OS made this thing seamless, and if memory serves me well, you could switch the SD cards out and they would run the same in any of these devices. It just it will just run perfectly well. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, this thing has included Wi-Fi on there as well, so I don't want to forget that. And that makes things great, so you can connect to RetroArch, get your retro achievements and stuff, and I believe you can even connect locally through the Wi-Fi as well, in terms of multiplayer game. So uh, yeah, there's that. One of the issues though that I did have with this particular device, and it might have just been my unit, the display, it, it's very weak and it sometimes even feels like it's, it's popping out a little bit. Triggers are great. They got the back all right this time, you know, especially with that bigger battery in there. Look, that's solid on there. You know what I mean? You got to really tug at it to get that off. On the whole, it's a great device. Again, pocketable, not as pocketable as this, but this is still pocketable all the same. And again, they did pretty well with this. This thing sold thousands of units straight off the bat. This one didn't do as well, but it was a good go-to if you couldn't get your hands on the original one. Let's move on. The Pocket Sprite. <laughs> it's cute, it's quirky, and absolutely not practical at all. <laughs> this is more of a little gimmick gift, which is, um, do you know what? It's very cool in the way that it works and the way they do things. There are a couple of variants to this as well. You've got a bunch of colors and it's also got a metal variant as well. If you don't use it very often, the battery lasts forever. I can't even remember the last time this thing was charged, but it's a relatively small battery in there. It will play NES, Game Boy, Master System and Game Gear, I believe. And as I say, it's just a nice little talking thing in regards to conversations. The way that you upload games to it is very interesting as well. It's got its own sort of IP address. So you connect online and you'll upload your games or remove your games via the website that they give you here. And it can, yeah, and it works like that. But again, very cute, very quirky, but you can't play this. You, you need to really bring it in close. <laughs> and as you can see, the display is literally about the size of my thumbnail. So Ambernic, they went ham when it comes to their vertical handhelds. They've got a variety, they've got, and variations, each of them with various color schemes, which is very, very cool. And there is something for everybody here when it comes to vertical handhelds. I mean, you've got the RG Nano, this thing is super small, super pocketable, and it's on a, it's got a metal case in a metal shell making it strong, durable and easy to carry around. The issue we have with it 
again much like the pocket sprite is that it's really small on top of that they, i believe they ripped the software from funky s <laughs> so if you've got a funky s and you look at it you can see that there are a lot of familiarities between these two devices in regards to the stuff the software that it has but it's very cute it's very cool and this thing will play up to ps1 great now you got the 35XX. This is the first iteration of this device. And this was to compete with the Miu Mini Plus. Or between the Miu Mini and the Miu Mini Plus. It's got a big screen. I actually prefer this display. And Black Seraph did some fantastic work with regards to the firmware, with the garlic firmware that's on there. And again, it's just easy, pocketable, light, and it's, and it's cost effective as well. It's pretty cheap. Got your triggers on the back there as well and you know there's not much more to be said about it then they came out with the and not in this order when they came out but after this would be the step up which will be the rg35xx plus again running on a linux system i haven't got garlic os on there at the moment and i don't know if that's even out yet i really should be paying more attention but hey here it is great device this time around though they got wi-fi they got bluetooth and it plays Dreamcast and PSP. Maybe not the entire library, but it plays enough to get by, which is very cool. This is dull looking. I don't really like the way the firmware is in here. So when Garlic is released for it, I'll be running to get that and having that flashed and installed. Then we've got the RG353V. Again, this is a great device. It comes in two variants with a bunch of colors. You've got this one, which is dual boot. So you've got Android on there. You've also got, um, Linux systems on here as well which you can use you can switch them out between these two sd card slots and this will play up to dreamcast and psp as well um, it doesn't and it does a fairly decent job the difference between the two a little bit more power kicking inside of this one it's obviously a touch display it being an android and also we got these all important analog sticks as well which is very very cool and now for the big boy <laughs> the rg405 v Listen, when this thing came out, everybody was saying it. This is the chunky boy, the big boy when it comes to vertical handhelds. It's easy to hold, easy to get along with. And when you install something like Daijisho on there, because this is running the this is running an Android system on there anyway, it just makes things super easy, super seamless. And this will play even PS2. GameCube and even some Wii titles again maybe not all of them not all of them flawlessly but again it does a great job and this thing's hella powerful you've got your analog sticks here you've got a fan on here which sort of resembles the GameCube and also this thing comes in a variety of colors each of these devices um, many of us youtubers have reviews on them so if you like any particular one check out my videos and check out theirs there's some fantastic youtubers out there so tune in my favorite vertical handheld out of all of these is absolutely the rg405v this thing had me hooked and i'm still playing this as a daily driver anyway i really enjoy this device it's easy to hold it's chunky and you can have great sessions on there for hours just playing it because it's got a massive screen on there as well and this thing is even more fun when you can connect to your ps4 or your ps5 and just have some good fun with it man once you get used to the button layout anyway yeah yeah man connected to your ps4 or your ps5 with the what is it the ps play app on the play store makes this thing so much more fun you can get much more out of it and as you can see here there's no latency and this is just a testament to the power of this thing man it's very cool <laughs> But when it's all said and done, none of these devices would exist if it wasn't for the original OG Game Boy. Yeah, I had this one modded, so it's all white and stuff. But without this device right here, the foundation of all handhelds, this thing here, gotta pay homage and give it some respect, man. Fantastic energy drainer. <laughs> But yeah, guys, I hope you liked the video. If you haven't got any of these and you're, you're thinking about getting one, there's a bunch of variety there you can choose from. And I hope I helped in that respect. So guys, take care, stay safe. Questions, comments, and concerns, leave them in the comments below. And peace.